what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on the Android 12 and here this is the 9th January 2022 build of the Evolution X ROM this is the latest build as of right now yes I have updated from the previous build but let me tell you in the previous builds there were huge bugs like there were huge stutters and stuff and the double tap to wake did not work properly those kind of bugs all have been fixed in this particular build and the whole experience of using this build was amazing and yes you can flash this rom by just watching the video from the card or the description and the same with any android 11 firmware based rom so you can just flash the android 11 based firmware the rom file and the disable dm verity script or something like that with that method you can flash this rom and it should work properly in the about section this is how it looks like we have the evolution x logo right there and the android version still shows as android 12 and the evolution x version shows as snow 6.0 for rafael or redmi k20 pro and here the build it shows up again the 9th january 2022 official build the security patch is still not of january 2022 yet this is still of december 2021 and we have the stock kernel as the soviet star and the build date is present over there again and the build maintainer is still stalix and we have the build number right here in the system settings everything is almost similar we have the system updater right here you can check for updates from right there and we have the gesture settings like the quickly open camera does work and in the system navigation gestures in this gesture navigation if you go into the settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant that is this one as you can see swipe to invoke assistant is working perfectly fine then we have the pill length changing option and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture also we have the haptic feedback and here we get the advanced gesture options so you can set this long left swipe action and stuff so that if you swipe and hold like this as you can see right now it takes a screenshot and of course you can change it to these many options if you're noticing let me go back and we have the full screen gestures as well with that you can disable the pill bar right here if you don't want that so that is cool and the two button and three button navigations are there too let me go back we have the one-handed mode then the press and hold power button and we have the screenshot option this is the swipe click screenshot this is working fine again we have the edit delete option and if you are somewhere where there is a lot of space to scroll and stuff like this if you take a screenshot as you can see there is a capture mode option if you click on capture mode it will open that markup kind of thing and you can select a lot more space and you can edit them with the markup and you can make a doodle out of it just like this so yeah this is working perfectly fine the screenshot and stuff is working perfectly fine no issues with that and we also have the prevent ringing option right there and the adaptive playback option in the gestures and we have the live translate too if you want that let me go back the stock keyboard here is gboard and in the front camera settings we have the pop-up camera sound effects and we do not have any camera calibration as of right now but that's how it is now let's talk about the home screen a little bit this is how it looks like and the wallpaper i'm using is from the wallp app and to the left of the home screen we still get the google's discover page that is working perfectly fine and we have the widgets and stuff working perfectly fine again this is the newer clock widget and this is the other clock widget so everything with this android 12's clock widgets and other things are working perfectly fine no issues with that and everywhere the app drawer and stuff everything is super fast and smooth it is as you can see it is fairly fast and smooth and here you can search for any particular apps just like this i have installed the gcam Unix version and that is working perfectly fine as you can see and yes i have customized it a little bit and with that as you can see the 0.66 lens is working perfectly fine this is the ultra wide angle lens and even the 2x telephoto zoom lens is working perfectly fine and even the front camera let me just open it quickly so yeah the front camera as well is working perfectly fine so no issues with this gcam this is the gcam unix version 2.6 i guess this is working perfectly fine again also you can use the gcam go to if you want that and as you can see the gcam go as well is working fine i'll link all these cameras right in the description so don't worry okay so there is this stock camera this is a very old kind of basic google camera as you can see this does not have much settings so yeah you can take a basic picture just like this so there is no shutter lag or something like that the stock camera is decent but i would say it's a very old kind of ui i don't like it very much that's why i have been using with gcam swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you the notification on the quick setting panel and you can double tap on the status bar to actually lock the device and once you lock the device this is how the always on display appears as you can see the double tap to wake right now has been completely fixed it is working perfectly fine and in the fingerprint scanner if i tap my finger as you can see it is unlocking my device super fast no issues with that let me try one more time 
So yeah, the Fingwit scanner is fairly fast and snappy and it is working all the time almost. So I haven't faced any issues with the Fingwit scanner yet. And talking about faulty calling and calling via Bluetooth and stuff, everything is working, no issues with that. And you can of course change some stuff from right here, change the output of the call. And yeah, there is no call recording option with this Google dialer, but that's how it is. Talking about the quick sending panel, you can have the Wi-Fi mobile data and I have added some more toggles. Let me actually show you. I have added this Android 12 screen recorder, you can say. It has the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time. And we have the show stop dot, then the lower quality for small size videos and stuff in the recording and we have the dark theme toggle so if you click on the dark theme as you can see this is how it works and yes about the dark theme let me actually talk about it a little bit more in the theme section once you have the dark theme enabled if you go into the dark theme there is the theme color changing option so right now you can change it to pitch black if you want to and that's how the background will go completely dark just like this so this is perfect amulet black and that is present right now in the Evolution Xtrom. It wasn't there earlier, so that's why I just showed you. We have all these theme colors for the dark theme. So let me just disable the dark theme for the time being and let me show you some more toggles. We have the always on display switching option, then the hotspot, the do not disturb, then the data saver and the nearby shared. And the nightlight also works perfectly fine here, no issues with that. And we have the sound toggle too, so if you tap and hold on it, you get the volume panel just like this. And right now I have this Bluetooth device connected, that's why it's showing the Bluetooth icon right there. And the screenshot option is there, the heads up and the home controls and the reboot toggle is also there. You can directly reboot to the recovery from right here. And if you enable the FPS info, this is kind of weird that the FPS shows up on the top left of the screen, which is looking a little weird. And we have the DC dimming from right here. Also, you have the high brightness mode. This is for the outdoor brightness mode. You can actually use this when you are outdoors and stuff. And in the power menu, this is how it looks like. I have the advanced reboot enabled. That's why it's showing this recovery and bootloader and the system UI option. So yeah, from the power menu itself, I can directly reboot to the recovery. And of course we have the edit and the settings icon over there and you can edit multiple toggles, whichever you want to from right here. We also have the gaming macro right here. Now up close, all the icons looks like this over here in the quick setting panel. So you get to see all the informations in the quick setting panel itself. And even on the status bar, this is how it looks like. And yeah, it looks fairly informational, I would say. In the settings panel, we have the evolver and there you find all the customizations. Right now, there is a huge amount of customization. So let me show you one by one. We have the dark theme again, which I showed already. And we have the headline and body fonts. You can choose between these many fonts from right here. And the icon shapes you can change, then the icon packs, then the signal icons, then the Wi-Fi icon, etc. And even there is the use custom color option, you can change that. And by default, the color of the like accent is from the wallpaper, whichever wallpaper you're using. I'm using a wallpaper from the Wallp app again. And we have the status bar items. Here we have the status bar items, call strength, the screencast, and the headset blue that's the icons you can enable from right here. And we have the clock and date settings from here. You can customize the clock and date right now. I have customized it like this one. And we have the carrier label, the traffic indicator. You can enable it, but I am using a different app for the traffic indicator monitoring. So that's how it is. And we have the battery style changing option. You get plethora of battery style changing option right now. I have been using it with the battery icon right or the icon landscape right. And this is how it looks like. But you can also go with the big dot circle or something like that if you want to. Then we have the battery percentage. You can have it outside the icon or inside the icon. I have been using it with the outside. And we have the show notification count, then the combined signal icons, Bluetooth battery status. You can disable it if you want to for some reason. Then we have the show 4G instead of LTE, then the roaming indicator, etc. options are there. In the notifications, we have the ambient edge lighting, then the heads up disabling option, and we have the battery light or the notification LED light which is present in the pop-up camera. Also, we have the blink flashlight for incoming calls and the vibrate on connect, call waiting and disconnect as well. Let me go back. We have the quick setting panel here. We have the gaming macro and the vibrate on toggle touch. Then the quick setting quick pull down is also there. Then we have the smart pull down again and the show brightness slider option is there. Now for this brightness, slider, there is a huge amount of customization. I would say there is the show brightness slider, show brightness slider on bottom. Then we have the show brightness slider in the quick setting panel. Then we have the adaptive brightness button. So with all this, you get the brightness panel or the brightness slider just like this. And you can have the always on display turned on just like this by just hitting this toggle. So this is cool. And you can also have it like below in the quick setting panel if you enable all this. We have the animation style, the animation duration, etc. In the power menu, we have the disable power menu on lock screen. Then we have the advanced restart as well. And in the system settings, this is how it looks like. This is for the hold power button for Google Assistant. And for the Google Assistant, let me actually show you. Okay, Google. As you can see, Google Assistant with the voice trigger is also working fine. No issues with that. 
and we have the gestures here we have the brightness control the double tap to lock on the screen the double tap to sleep on the status bar as well and wake up on those and stuff so yeah brightness rider is also working just like this very handy feature for me at least i use it on a daily basis let me go back we have the lock screen here we have the always on display scheduling option if you want it just for the day or like after sunset you can have it from right there let me go back we have the fingerprint authentication vibration and sub screen of fod is also there pressed color is there you can change and we have the music visualizer etc let me go back to the buttons here we have the on-screen navigation bar then the lock screen toggle power button torch is also there and that is working fine let me scroll down we have some more volume steps and stuff and we have the animations here we have the charging animation as again this is working perfectly fine while you are plugging in a device the charging animation shows up and then we have the miscellaneous settings here we get the use burn-in protection this is great that we get this burn-in protection for an AMOLED display it is a must I would say and we have the USB configuration I have been using it with the file transfer mode because I find it very convenient whenever I plug in my USB cable to the PC the PC just opens the file manager of the device's internal storage so that is great next thing we get the team and you can get to know about the team of evolution x and you can visit their website donate to the developers if you want to let me go back we have the battery settings and there we have the battery usage the battery saver and the adaptive preferences and stuff but let me tell you you don't get much information here you don't get to see the battery cycles and stuff so for that i have installed the echo battery app and with this i have been monitoring the battery and i would say the battery life on this rom has improved quite a lot if you check out my screen on time as you can see right now i have been having about six and a half hours of screen on time so i would say yes the battery life have been improved with this update and earlier i was getting about five and a half hours of screen on time but right now almost i'm getting six and a half hours of screen on time with my kind of usage and right now as you can see this is based on 42 sessions so yeah i have been using this rom for quite a while now and if you go into the health i have about 77 percent battery health left so my battery is acting like 3068 mh yes it has degraded quite a lot and this device is from 2019 so for two years i have used it and right now i have about 77 percent of life left on this battery so yeah i would say this is great that we are still getting about six plus hours of screen on time with this particular rom on this redmi k20 pro and my device definitely has 600 plus charging cycles again and of course the fast charging works fine here too you shouldn't worry about that in the sound and vibrations this is how it looks like we have the media call volume just like this and again the volume panel looks like this you can expand it just like this and we have the link ringtone and notification volume if you want to and the do not disturb you can enable or disable from right here and the volume panel timeout you can of course change that that is really great for some reason the volume panel just goes away in other roms but here you can actually change the timeout for this volume panel for how long it will stay so that is great and we have the vibration and haptics you can enable it once you are in the general mode right now i'm in the like do not disturb mode that's why it's not showing and the vibrator intensity for notification for ring for haptic feedback everything you can customize from right here and we have the dial pad tones the screen locking sound charging sound charging vibration etc and we also have the mi audio direct and from here you can change it to u edition or something the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is just great over here and let me actually go back from here we also have the clear speaker option and let me show you one more thing with the bluetooth devices i have this rockers 335 connected and with that the qualcomm aptex hd audio is working perfectly fine and the sound quality via bluetooth as well is amazing over here in the display settings we have the custom display settings that is the dc dimming and the high brightness mode you can enable or disable dc dimming if you want that and we have the lock screen settings and from here you have the always on display or always show time and info option and we have the screen timeout from right here you can change and the adaptive or auto brightness again you can enable or disable the dark theme you can enable or disable from right here you can enable the night light from here and the colors i have changed it to boosted and you can also change the rgb control from right here like the red green and the blue strength you can actually change let me go back we have the prevent accidental wake up this is the pocket detection that is working fine and the double tap to wake is also there then the wake up on plug is also there let me go back to this wallpapers and styles from here you can have the accent color kind of change and this is actually for the wallpaper kind of accent colors and you can also go with the basic colors if you want to then the dark theme and the themed icons you can also enable the themed icons looks great let me actually enable this one and with this one the themed icons looks like this and yeah it does look great but the gcam unix version doesn't have the new google camera icon for the themed icons but the gcam go does 
And again, Google's own app, which is the YouTube Creator Studio app, doesn't have a themed icon as of right now, which looks kind of weird, I would say. And again, we have the app grid changing option up to 5x5 five five grid. Let me go back from right here. And of course, you can go into this wallpapers and styles from the home screen too. If you tap and hold on a blank area, you can go to the widgets and the wallpapers and styles. If you tap here, as you can see, this is the wallpapers and styles. You don't have to go into the settings actually to get into this wallpapers and styles. Right now, let me show you the security option. Here we have the pin and if you go into the settings, we have the quick unlock if you want that and the power button instantly locks option is there. And let me tell you, there is only the finger bit option. There is no option for the face unlock or app lock as of right now. Talking about some more important things about a ROM, that is the DNM is showing as L1 over here, if you are noticing. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues probably. And if you are someone who uses banking apps on your custom ROM device, this is a great ROM because it passes safety net test right out of the box so you can use banking apps without any worry. And yes, I have been using some banking apps, they are working perfectly fine. By the way, here I have right now opened a couple of apps like these. And yeah, this is how the recent panel looks like. You can take a screenshot from right here. You can select some text and you can also open the split screen mode from right here. And let me show you which app stays in memory. So first let's open Chrome and yes, it looks like it is still in memory. And right now let's open Facebook and yes, it is still in memory. And again, you can swipe down just like this to actually get into the one handed mode. This is really user friendly and the Twitter. Okay, so Twitter has been removed, I guess, from memory. Play Store is still in memory. Instagram, yes, this is still in memory. Okay, so for some reason it's opening the camera. Let's go to home. And right now let's open something else like the YouTube. Yes, YouTube is still in memory. And we have the DRM info. And that is, yes, still in memory. And the safety net app as well, still in memory. So the memory management or the RAM management should be good enough if you want to look more into the performance. Here are the Android 20 Geekbench code with a CPU stress test of this ROM. And once you open a game, this is the icon that you get once you pull down the notification panel, just like this once and you click on this and then you can live stream on YouTube. Then we have the FPS option and we also have some other options like the gaming dashboard is completely there. We have the do not disturb as well. You can screen record from right here. And if I tap on the FPS icon, let me just right now open the game. And as you can see, it's showing my FPS of the game just right here. So if I play a game, I can see the FPS are completely monitored from right there. So you can set it to a uh, left side of the screen or the left bottom or something like that. Or you can just like do this, it will show this arrow. Once you click on that, you can see the FPS right there. This is a very handy feature for gamers to actually look at the real time FPS, I would say. So that's been it guys about the Evolution X ROM, the latest built on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Yes, I have been using or daily driving this ROM for about a week, I would say. And my experience on this has been really great, except for some buggy updates. But right now, the latest update is amazingly stable for daily driving, in my frank opinion. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDNT signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.